Let's go to the next clip, which is about Vivek Ramaswamy joining TikTok <laughs> after the influencer turned MMA fighter Jake Paul apparently talked him into it. Let's pull that. <laughs> TikTok is banned on government-issued devices because of its ties to the Chinese government. Yet you join TikTok at the dinner with boxer and influencer Jake Paul. Should the commander in chief be so easily persuaded by an influencer? So the answer is I have a radical idea for the Republican Party. We need to win elections. And part of how we win elections is reaching the next generation of young Americans where they are. So when I get into office, I've been very clear. Kids under the age of social, under the age of 16, should not be using addictive social media. We're only going to ever get to declaring independence from China, which I favor, if we actually win. So while the Democrats are running rampant, reaching the next generation three to one, there's exactly one person in the Republican Party which talks a big game about reaching young people, and that's me. This is infuriating because TikTok is one of the most dangerous social media apps yes, that is. we could have. And what you've got, I honestly, every time I hear you, I feel a little bit dumber for what you say. Because I can't believe they hear you've got a may. TikTok situation. What they're doing is these 150 million people are on TikTok. That means they can get your contacts, they can get your financial information, they can get your emails, they can Let get just say, text messages, they can get all I, this of is these important. things. This is China very important knows for our exactly party. What they're this doing. is very important and what for our party, and I'm going to say you've gone and you've helped China stop. build make medicines will, in China, not America. Me, you are me. now wanting kids to go and get on the social media that's dangerous for all of us. You went and you were in business with the Chinese that gave Hunter Biden five million dollars. We can't trust you. We so can't me, trust you. We can't something. have TikTok and I think that we, this is very important. Mr. Ramaswamy, you have 15 seconds. I think, excuse me, you have 15 seconds, Mr. Ramaswamy. Thank you. I think we would be better served as a Republican Party if we're not sitting here hurling personal insults and actually have a legitimate debate I, I, about policy. I, you know, obviously there, there's several dimensions to this policy debate, and some of them are stupider than others. I, I just find it remarkable that, you know, this has been identified as a problem by both political parties for several years at this point, And there's been a lot of fighting over it. And this nonsense that they tried to do in the Trump administration, where they're going to like get a big deal for Oracle to do the server pr provision mm -hmm. for TikTok, which didn't seem to address any of the problems, but would make a whole bunch of money for Oracle. But basically, you know, the... The criticism here that I think is the most valid is that, you know, free speech and free markets do not require you to allow an author authoritarian foreign government to own and control a media entity in the United States. And in fact, we've already forced the Chinese to disgorge one social platform, which was Grindr. Uh, which was acquired by a Chinese controlled company a few years ago. And that was re reviewed by the, the CFIUS committee in the, in the Treasury Department and found that that was national security risk. And they were forced to sell the app back to a U.S. owner. Um, and that, you know, that that didn't interfere with people's ability to access Grindr. Um, but it did ensure that, you know, the, that we were protecting this, you know, th this platform that contained a lot of information from Americans from being controlled by a by a hostile foreign entity. And I think, you know, I think it is a real concern that, you know, the TikTok algorithm, which is a black box, gives the Chinese government, which is unelected, a lot of ability to to influence the way in which information is received by Americans. I don't think we would have allowed the Soviets to do that during the Cold War. And so it seems it feels to me like there's a there's a relatively narrow policy area here where, the, you know, there's there's some talk of whether you could use the existing law that was used for Grindr, whether you could use that on TikTok because of some U.S. based entities that they've already acquired, saying that, you know, TikTok is a formerly U.S. company that was acquired. But even if it wasn't, you could have a new law and you could have a solution where you don't take TikTok away from anyone, but you make sure that it is not controlled by the Chinese government, which it seems to me like that mm -hmm. there shouldn't even be a libertarian objection to because we're not here to protect the the, the association rights of the, Chi of the communist Chinese government. One thing yeah, I'm curious I mean, about, if you uh, don't mind, well, Josh, yeah. is like what in your view and in the stuff that you have read, what do you think the harm caused by TikTok and TikTok's access to Americans' data is? Like, do you mind just like going into a little bit of detail there? Because I so frequently get frustrated by this conversation, this debate, because it's like, this is bad, but people infrequently expand on what specifically is bad about it. So my main concern is about the algorithm and, and the and the content that people are viewing more than it is about the user okay. data. I, you know, I think that, you know, we, first of all, we don't know the extent to which that they are making algorithmic choices that are promoting messages that are favorable to the Chinese government or suppressing messages 
messages that they don't like. But the other thing is that, you know, if you when they control this platform that like half of Americans are using, they can they can do that and flip a switch in the future. And it, it takes years to do to wrest control of it away from them. So I think it's, you know, it's worth doing even if we haven't identified something that they are doing yet, because especially if, you know, if we got into a situation, if there was a war over Taiwan, for example, where the tensions were even higher between the U.S. and China, I don't think we'd want them having that sort of power. As yeah. for user data, I'm not that concerned about them having, you know, large volumes of data on lots of ordinary people, which is probably a very little value to the Chinese. And there are supposed to be certain privacy protections that are done, that are created by the Apple and the Google app stores. I don't have a good technological sense of how foolproof that stuff is. Um, but, you know, you, you certainly you could have specific targets of Chinese surveillance where it might be useful to have access into some relatively small number of people's phones. And I think that could be a concern. But my, my main concern is about TikTok as a media company rather than TikTok as a company that has user data. TikTok is like yeah, a propaganda me... machine that can just easily yeah. be, right. you know, dispensing, you know, bad information to people in the event of like a Taiwan invasion. Okay, that makes sense. Right. Yeah, let me say this: it's a it's a legitimate concern for sure. Um, it is important to be real precise and like dig down into the details of what it is the government would be banning. I mean, the company that you know. There's a parent company that owns TikTok that is based mm -hmm. in China and also runs a Chinese version of TikTok, which is much different. Mm -hmm. There's a separate company based in the U.S. that supposedly runs the U.S. version, and they mm -hmm. say there's a firewall. It's unclear how strong that firewall is. I would want any sort of ban on you know, manipulation of the public through this kind of propaganda you're talking about to be pretty well proven out uh, and something that we, the public, would be able to see instead of what we tend to get, which was the law that was proposed to ban TikTok in the first place. We, I, I encourage uh, people to go watch the, the stream we did on this, which was a sprawling law that would like, you know, was throwing in trying to regulate crypto and Bitcoin and like all uh, mm -hmm. telecommunications infrastructure. So that's kind of these things just kind of get all jammed together into this big power grab. And that's what I as a libertarian get really nervous about uh, anytime we start regulating uh, social media, even if it's, you know, potentially a hostile social media. So yeah, if you can prove that there's some sort of, um, you know, propagandizing, uh, intentional propagandizing happening from a hostile foreign government, that's one thing. But to Liz's point, it, it it can't be it can't be vague and has to be extremely targeted. Yeah, I wouldn't want the government regulating the algorithm. I mean, first, I don't really trust the government to do that. And then also, like, even if right. the government did impose a regulation, I don't know how we would ensure that that TikTok under Chinese control was following the regulation. Um, what, what I want is is ultimate Amer American control and ownership over the company. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, the I the our Constitution and our culture of free speech requires that, you know, that people be able to do things like, you know, decide what kind of information they want to disseminate on their media platform. I don't really, I don't want to, to take that out of the private sphere. I actually want to move it into the private sphere so that it's not the Chinese government, so that it's some private American entity doing that. I think it's also worth lingering on the idea that the federal government is going to regulate whether teenagers have access to social media. Um, that mm -hmm. seems like one of the crazier ideas that is just routinely floated out there on that stage. I mean, I think, you know, Vivek, uh, he has it in for the uh, young people <laughs> in general uh, between that and his uh, proposal to, you know, make everyone serve in some some sort of civil service in, in order to be able to vote until their age, uh, you know, a, a higher, yeah. I think age 21 <laughs> or 25. It was 25. Uh, you know, Isn't that yeah. nuts? 25. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he, he's going on uh, TikTok uh, with uh, Jake Paul, but I, I don't think he's courting the, the youth vote. In fact, no. he wants to, to outlaw it. Hey, thanks for watching that conversation with Josh Barrow about the recent GOP debate. You can watch the full conversation right here or another clip over here.